I welcome you on behalf of my student Karanveer to the next episode of a very interesting story from Karanveer Bhatt who has entered into his fifth year of the five year integrated BBA plus MBA program. Welcome Karan. Thank and, you so much sir. Uh, I am very excited to meet you after a long time. First thing first. How it feels that you have almost spent 80% of your tenure and very soon next year you are going to finish your journey at JGU. So I think uh, a few words won't do it justice. But if I had to try, I would say I feel um, changed. Transformed would be a better word. Transformed. Yes. Okay. And um, you know, when I first started out, actually just from the first period right after my admission interview. It felt like it was going to be a lifetime and, and now it feels like it was yesterday. <laughs> How was your transition from your first to second and third year in terms of your gelling up with your friends, right. understanding about the program, what you opted for because there was no exit option in between and you have to mandatorily study for five years. That's right. Uh, so, our batch was an interesting one. So, I came in uh, in the integrated BBA and IBM uh, batch of 2020, passing out in 2025, right? And our journey started in a very interesting way because we came in when the pandemic was going on. Oh, right? yes, 2020. Right. So, uh, we actually started our journey online. Everybody else that we talked to, our seniors, you know, they were also sort of facing this for the first time. And going into it, uh, were there certain apprehensions? Sure, right? Naturally, that would be the case. But I think what really shocked us, I think shocked is the right shocked. word. Shocked. Yeah. Was uh, the way our professors handled this uh, transition, right? I remember my first class, I was not expecting it to be that engaging, right? The and first class the for first itself class engaging. For the first semester, the very first time we you know, sat down, I was in my home, it was the online class. And I remember like, um, the first 10 minutes was kind of like a blitz and then we got into it and, the, and then I saw like we were being engaged with. The professor was teaching us with respect, with the dignity that you would expect to you know, sort of have in an environment like that. And, but more importantly, is the engagement that was being carried out. I forgot I was sitting in my home. Right. So when was the first time you happened to be at the JGU campus? So sir, that would be my first semester uh, in the, uh, the, basically the third semester. Okay. Right. And uh, this is when it was a hybrid semester. So we were given the option to stay at home or come to the campus. So how many students uh, decided to be a part of the actual learning from campus? So uh, overwhelmingly more than 95%. I would say uh, almost the entire batch showed up. Tell me something about your program and uh, its learnings and outcomes which you feel you mm -hmm. have got in four years. Right. Um, I remember something very specific. So uh, this was the uh, communications class that I had uh, with Professor Minakshi Toma. And uh, first of all, a great class. I actually can't wait for other people to engage with that class. And as they, you know, as our juniors come, come into this program, I remember us being told that, look, we are giving you tools. Okay, we're not trying to spoon feed you, right? We're not trying to like tell you exactly what you have to do. That's on you. And I, the, the way the pedagogy works, it actually makes you feel like an individual. Like the onus is on you. You have to undertake your journey to become something. And the way the university is set up and the pedagogy is set up, the way the staff is, the professors are, they are there to be fac facilitators, right? And that's a word I heard a lot initially when I showed up here. And perhaps I didn't really understand it that well. But as time went on, I realized what that means, right? And our professors were always there throughout the journey, facilitating our growth instead of spoon feeding it, instead of like, you know, giving us our shape. They were there, okay, you're making this mistake, fine, perhaps you should do this. How is the diversity of the students in your program and right. how do you feel it plays any role in mm -hmm. the development or not? I remember figuring out that we had students from every corner of the country, right? So just in my batch. Uh, we have people from uh, Bangalore, we have people from Hyderabad, Vishakhapatnam, Delhi, you know, all over from Bihar, from, we have people from Orissa, Charkhand, Punjab, 
Kashmir, right? And now the way I look at it is, every every corner of the country I want to go to, I know somebody. I have a house I can visit, right? So it's been quite a blessing. Uh, more importantly, in a in a sort of learning perspective for me specifically, it's given me a glimpse to a lot of different um, ways of thinking. There is a very strict policy. All of you are uh, supposed to take a permission before you exit the main gate. You cannot right. go out. Right. Correct. Right. So, how, what are your takes on this uh, policy? Should there be something of this thing existing? Uh, right. And uh, what are your thoughts? Well, uh, sir, I say with uh, with privilege comes responsibility. Right. Uh, nothing comes without accountability. So you. You know, us being students in this environment, um, we have been given an incredible infrastructure. We've been given an incredible eco space, right? Where we are, we have the opportunity to engage with a lot of different things. Uh, the surrounding area, the larger Sonipat area, is rich in cultural diversity. You have many interesting things to engage with. But as far as the gate policy comes, I think I understand why it's required. Um, you know, you need to keep tabs on the security of the student. Uh, Ultimately, we are here to study, and our parents have sent us here with great, you know, um, trust in the institution. So I think it's the bare minimum that the institution is upholding, and uh, I, yeah, I respect that. I think it's it's necessary. What are the f uh, one, two, or three message which you would like to give to your juniors right. who have already become a part of this program, finishing their first year, or maybe now entering into the first year this mm -hmm. year in 2024? So. If you're listening to this and you're someone who's part of this program, I would say uh, one of the first things that is really important is be open to everything. You need to be an open person for new experiences and don't be afraid of change because this is a very dynamic environment. You're going to come here with a lot of you know, preconceived notions, you're going to come here with a lot of set in thoughts and beliefs and that's fine, you're entitled to them. But this is an environment where you really have to put, put yourself out there, be bare, Understand there's going to be conflicting situations, there's going to be situations that might make you feel uncomfortable. But remember that you're going to grow out of that, right? So um, I'll give you an example. So over here, you're going to be engaging with a lot of clubs as you go, go ahead. You're going to be engaging with a lot of activities and you'll be ha having to work with a lot of people whose style might differ than yours. And this is a situation where you're going to be lumped in with them. And how incredible is that? Because when you get out there in the real world, and that, I realized that through my internships, you don't get to pick and choose your groups. You don't get to, exactly. you know, you don't get to pick and choose who you work with. You have to become that person that can make the best of the situation you're put in. And I think this is the perfect environment to learn that. As far as uh, some of the don'ts, I think um, an environment like this comes with a lot of distractions. And it's very easy to get carried away. And that will happen to you multiple times. Many times you'll, you'll find, uh, you know, um, distractions that will not only distract you from personal growth, but might be harmful for you. And that exists everywhere. The good, one good thing about this place is just as many distractions exist, you have as many good people guiding you and as many good people that are around you. And I would say, you know, uh, surround yourself with them, uh, grow with them and uh, do not give up on opportunities. How right or correct right. information is it that are the teachers so strict that yes even if you are one minute late mm -hmm. it will cost you an attendance does it happen uh you put me in quite a spot here sir <laughs> so thank you for that uh i i wouldn't so it's not a draconian strictness right it's not um what you would expect from a very traditional institution like i said before professors here are very understanding so okay uh the system exists for a reason and exists quite rigidly and it is imposed, right? I'm not saying it's lax. What I, what I am saying is, if you have valid reasons for being late, this is not a place where the professor is just going to shut you down and tell you to go away or get out of the class. This is not what this institution is. Is it? I don't think so, sir, because this is where uh, the professor will hear you out. I have had instances where the professor might go, you know what, okay, talk to me at the end of the class. If you have a valid excuse, I'll hear you out. You okay. know, we are being treated as people. This is not just a numbers game. Okay, life happens. A professor himself said that to me once because I was late. He was like, look, currently life happens. I know right now, sit down. We'll go through the class. After the class, let's talk.
that's wonderful right? that's quite encouraging because you know this is important yeah. factor what are your aspirations what are your plans so uh, if it is okay to be shared with uh, us of course of course uh, you know again for people who are, who are seeing this you might have a certain idea going into this program and again the beauty of the program is that it expands your world view so much and it gives you access to so many internship opportunities and other working opportunities that me myself right so when i came into this program i had a very different vision of the future and you could say in some sense it was quite linear right and it is that linearity that this place has changed for me so now i'll i'll give you a little bit of a rundown of my internships so i had the privilege of working with a with a uh uh finance uh a consulting firm based out of singapore it's called finac uh, that was quite a vivid experience and then i jumped from that to another one which was based out of singapore which is uh, called smile and smile. It, it is a marketing agency okay right and as it happens uh, through ocs which is office of career services in the university uh, because of that internship i got another interesting opportunity to work with mind purpose leadership which mind purpose leadership. leadership yeah it's a very unique uh, consulting uh, firm that exists out of Delhi and here and they give very unique uh, solutions to uh, you know the mundane problems of not just large but small uh, working businesses and they really focus on personalities and you know consumer behavior and sort of bringing in those learnings so it was such an interesting experience for me that um, completely changed the way i was looking at my trajectory right and then i got into marketing and that brought me to working with some government agencies as well because then i was working with cespl which is a engineering a consulting firm and i was okay. on the marketing side of that and thankfully because of that i got access to uh, a lot of you know functionings where you have to deal with the government different agencies and coming from a serving family myself um, you know that's something i really connected with and now as it happens i'm not sure what the future holds but i am preparing for the upsc as well and it's something i i have devoted myself to completely you are preparing for the upsc that's right sir my yeah. best wishes are with you because Thank you so much. never in the history yeah. of this five year integrated program of uh, bba honors plus mba i've heard any student aspiring for a upsc this is something which is very very interesting to hear friends because as an mba graduate when we generally plan we think of only the corporate world but here we have karan who has made his own story and he is trying for upsc our good wishes are with karan Thank and you, we wish him all the best from our side that yes he would might be able to open the gate of a new dream and even the students who are aspiring to do an integrated bba mba program they feel it is not always the corporate world there where they have to enter and they might try hands on being a upsc aspirant as well friends keep listening to us subscribe to the official youtube channel of jindal global business school our aim is to bring life at campus before you you all have certain aspirations and it is students like karan and many others who have been a part of this ecosystem for a long time now and through their words through their journey learnings we want to tell you something which can make your life more meaningful